Hey, good morning. It's Mark. What do custom bike frames have to do with the success of your medical practice, especially if it's a if it's a large group? You may recall from history in high school the story of the Industrial Revolution when on the manufacturing side as opposed to the change in the farming side things switched from a complete you know, sort of guild system in which craftsmen created one-off products one at a time to industrialization to to factories where things were mass produced the benefit of course for society in general if there is such a thing as society in general another issue is that items which were expensive and in short supply because they were made one at a time were now made in mass prices went down availability went way up in some cases quality stayed the same but in many cases depending on the item quality suffered now, today there's a rebirth of sorts in the in the bespoke world from bespoke tailoring to bespoke shoes to a slightly lesser degree made to measure, made to order which is not completely made just for the customer but which is on an item by item basis custom fitted there was a story in the Wall Street Journal earlier this week about a bike manufacturer, if you want to call him a manufacturer, who in the in the market for the Uber high priced bike, and so we're talking about bikes itself for thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, a lot of that business is shifted to uh, carbon fiber, which now can be mass manufactured. Well, this guy does a custom titanium frame uh, which sells for at a minimum uh, close to five thousand dollars at a minimum each frame is made just for the particular rider who is willing to spend the uh, five or six or maybe seven thousand dollars even just for the frame let alone the rest of the bike so what's that have to do with medicine what's it have to do with medical practice especially what's it have to do with a large group that is as medicine has become more factory-like, a aggregation of practices into large practices, the, the introduction of uh, outside money, private equity, publicly held money into aggregating medical groups. In many cases, the relationship, what's, what is bound a group and the patients, what is bound the group even to a facility has suffered. I'm not suggesting that the solution to this is to go back to a complete craftsman model where practices break up and all we have are solo physicians treating patients one at a time, the, the concierge practice model. Uh, I believe that works on a small scale for those willing to pay for it but it doesn't work on a large scale. Instead, consider the impact of the sort of made to measure or the semi-custom model where patients and relationships are treated in a way that transforms. Not, it's not just the delivery of a service or simply a delivery of an experience, but a delivery of an experience within the setting of a much larger business that creates a true sort of transformation for the client. Think of the distinction between a, an internal medicine group which has a lobby that looks like the DMV 
which gives patients numbers and calls them out, and even another large practice in which the, the front stage, the image portrayed uh, to the patients is one of actual customization and of care and how those practices thrive in a very different way. In fact, even the relationship on a much different level, the relationship between a hospital-based group and its contract and the way it can develop a relationship with a facility uh, has a very high bearing, at least in what you might call my anecdotal experience in the number of years of a relationship uh, as opposed uh, to uh, the uh, somewhat, uh, which, I was gonna, which I believe is going to become even more prevalent, sort of a shocking experience of larger groups which have forgotten the value of that experience. So think how you can customize or semi-customize your relationships. They're just as important to your bottom line as, well, what an accountant would say is the bottom line.